Hey everybody, I'm excited about today's video. We're gonna do something new. Uh, I've been working on the frame for the last several months and today we're turning our attention to the front suspension, namely the spindles. Um, the current card I'm using has got the Asusa style spindle, which is this. This is a recreation. This is made by Vintage Cart Co. They took the Vintage or the Asusa and improved it by putting bushings in it, like these little bronze bushings. So this works really good. Um, it's kingpin straight up and down on this application and perfectly 90 degree angle, the three quarter inch bolt. Um, the actual, their basic, uh, Vintage Cart Co's basic ones have five eighths inch bolts. Uh, to fit their reproduction wheels, but this fits the original Honda wheel. So that's why we got a three-quarter, which I think is probably better anyway because it's a little stronger, hopefully. Um, but on this new cart, instead of taking these off my old cart and putting on the new cart, I'm building brand new ones from scratch. Uh, using some of the same information and, and pick up points. In other words, this dimension is going to stay the same. This dimension is going to stay the same. What we're going to do is we're going to put kingpin inclination some people call it SAI for steering axis inclination. So I'll show you what that means right now. Okay, so kingpin inclination. This is a photocopy of something I found on the internet. Sorry for the shadow on there. The light is a little funny. But this is the best one I found for solid axle. Um, some are drawn like this basically for an independent front suspension. But the gist of it is, is the bolt. Now let me do this picture over here, sorry. Uh, this is your kingpin inclination. So this line right here, you're drawing an imaginary line from the top of your kingpin, the mount up here to here, and then continue that line to the contact patch and in coordination with the center of your tire. So our tires are very narrow. Um, that's why this picture probably is a better representation to where, yeah, if you can see this, and hopefully you can, um, this line that goes through the center of the kingpin intersects the contact patch. Uh, in the standard kind of cart co or cycle cart front end that's really not taken into account um, i found this really nice drawing on cyclecartclub.com you can see that kingpin line coming straight down through the center of the tire patch center of your tire being here you want those to get close to you want to be able to maybe not intersect them but get close otherwise this is way out here and your steering angle can be corrected so the steering wheel all using on our cycle cars works, but I think this will improve it. I'm hoping it'll improve it. If it doesn't improve it, I'm wasting a lot of time and money. And <laughs> Anyway, uh, we'll report in another video how it actually turns out. But what we're starting with is the, this is a weldment. This is an Asusa weldment. This is the same one. If you have a Asusa spindle, this is what you have. This is a 14 degrees offset. So basically if you're setting your caster, uh, excuse me, camber, be 14 degrees of camber. Um, here's a kind of a full-scale mock-up I made. I drew the, this is the Asusa um, weldment. You can see there's 14 degrees here, so I'm going to zoom back a little bit. I don't know if you can get the whole thing in the camera or not, but down here is essentially 13 and a half inches from the ground to the top of the kingpin is what that measurement is. That's what this is. It's about three inches over, so this distance here works out to about 14 degrees, if you can see that. And this is the center of the kingpin running up the center of the kingpin. Not the back of the weldment, but the center of the kingpin running down to where it intersects the contact patch on your tire. So that's what we're trying to achieve. And when we weld this up, so it kind of works out that my, uh, one of my fabricator friends made these notes. So camber's 14, caster 7. We put 7 degrees of caster in there to help this thing steer straight. Here's a picture of my original drawing for my axle. So this is actually probably an inch and a half instead of inch and five eighths. Inch and five eighths didn't have a, uh, the right bending equipment for it. So later in the video, we're also going to try to address Ackerman. And we're going to address Ackerman by where we locate the steering controls on your uh, spindles. So here's a list of parts I've used. So starting at the top line, that's a 2.25 inch long DOM tubing inch and a quarter by 0.188. That's the thickness of it. We got two of those at two and two and a quarter inches. Uh, that's the same size as the the one that Vintage Cartco made, so it'll accommodate the use of the uh, bushings, which I'm going to show you in a second. The next item is a spindle bracket that's made by Asusa. Get that from several different places. I got mine from MFG Supply. Kingpin bolt. That's a five ace, 18 pitch by 3.25. Um, you could probably get that at a hardware store. I bought it through. MFG and it hasn't showed up yet, it must be on back order. 
And then the other item is the three quarter by 10, which is a 10 pitch, I guess the thread count, five inch long socket head cap screw. And the guy at the bolt supply store said they're 12.9 grade, which is stronger than grade eight, which is cool. I didn't know that existed. Um, and this is what I'm using for the bushing. So this is a drawing of the bushings. Here's the description. Um, see the price on there, 340. This is right off the website where I bought them. Um, where I got it. Let's see if the web page is even on here. Bronzebushings.com. So I could not find these in a hardware store anywhere. A um, little bit hard to find. So those are the nuts and bolts of it. So let me show you what I've got. I've already had my parts welded, the cap screws. First step was to take the cap screw. We're using a cap screw because you can get a better weld on it as opposed to a regular bolt. Let's see if you put a bolt on an angle. Um, you got a lot of void there. And so Roy Fields at Fields Fabrication welded these for me. I, don't, I can MIG weld, but TIG welding, um, not one of my skills. So anyway, so what he did is he put this on a mill and he, he convex the back of this bolt to where it matches up. So you get a much better weld all the way around it. I think that looks pretty good. It should be plenty strong. And he put a little machine work also in the cham chamfer in the edges a little bit. How nice that looks. So a couple hours of labor and he knocked those out for me. Um, so there's two of these. I put them on my tab, my, my plane here. This is perfectly parallel to the ground. 14 degrees offset. You can see how much offset there is in that when I set it straight. Um, so that's what we're looking for. So the next step will be, after putting all this together, is to build this piece. I'm going to start with a cardboard or paper template and try to accommodate the Ackerman angle. So the next thing to do is to bolt this on here, like that, put the bushings in it, mount it on the cart, and see where we're at. So let's do that now. Okay, so the next step is putting a string line from the center of the kingpin all the way back to the center of the axle. In this case, it's a differential, so if you have a regular axle, it'll just be the center of your... Find the center, right to left, and then the top. It'll get you this line. It goes all the way across, and it crosses over your frame. And the idea of that is to, on the standard spindle, basically, you can see how, put that in place, or how much different that would be. If I put it underneath, actually, you can see it better. Let me move this back. Okay. Sorry. Um, see how much different that is. So what we're doing is moving that pivot point to there. So I've got the little mock-up piece now for that. All this is a little piece of cardboard that I made a template of. Kind of looks like a little fish, but... Um, so what this is going to do, let me sit down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically set this on the spindle, this little bracket that kind of goes up near the top. And as I get up here, I'm trying to hold this in a videotape at the same time, but you can see this, the, the little hole that I've drawn on there pretty much runs right underneath where that string is at. So it worked out to be one inch. Um, so in other words, let me put this down. From the very center of your kingpin, the original was about three and an eighth or three three and three eighths inch out. So from that point over to the string line is about one inch. So if you've already got an Asusa spindle or this type of setup, you're just moving the hole over one inch. So that's all this is doing. So here's the Asusa part. Let me get the junk out of the way. Sorry. There's the Asusa part, and here's this piece, which is going to replace it. So. I could have cut this apart, but this is a perfectly good spindle since they're cutting it apart and redoing it. So anyway, so that's going to replace this and move this. You can see this where it moves it over. You see that where it kind of put it on top? It's just moving it over an inch that direction. And it's, once I put it in, it's not really going to move the point out further. If we go too far out, then this is going to have more travel than your pitman arms. So you'd have to lengthen your pitman arms if you want more travel. But this setup works great with the pitman arms. It bottoms out with the pitman arms just about the time this hits the uh, bracket. So the next thing is to do is to make, get some steel and make some pieces. Okay, so I got the plates cut. This is about one-eighth inch thick steel. 
So that's gonna mount right on there. Just gonna turn this around. I guess if I do a mirror image, it would be this. Like that. So next step, I'm gonna figure out if I'm gonna weld this here first or if I'm gonna weld this onto here first. I might do this to get it square to this. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, I'm gonna weld it tomorrow. I'm getting a little late tonight to do this. But anyway, that's where I am right now. Um, so there's our brackets. Got both of them cut and made. Um, they're pretty much a mirror image of each other. I clamped them together and then kind of ran the flapper disc around them and make them nice and smooth. Not real pretty, but I think that'll work. Okay, so I have the parts mocked up to be welded. Got a clamp down and there's a couple shims under here to make this uh, axle straight or level. So I've got a magnet here. Uh, when I did the first one, it kind of, when I did the first tack, it pulled it over, so I hammered it back and I seem to stay pretty straight. So here's the other one. This is still pretty hot from being welded. Um, turned out pretty good. I think that's gonna be plenty strong. So anyway, that's what we're going after. So we'll do the next one now. Oh, and one tip too. I noticed on this metal I had, there's some sort of coating on there. Um, kind of see it there in the dark area. So I, I took the grinder to it to knock that coating off. Seems to well pretty good with the coating off of it. Um, may not be totally necessary, but I feel better safe than sorry. Okay, so that side's welded up. I'm just using a framing square. See how level it is with it, nice and straight. Um, the first tack that I put on, which is there, did pull it over, I just hammered it back in place. And when I welded the other side, it stayed nice and straight. So we'll weld up the other side now. Okay, so there's that first piece welded up. Came out pretty nice and straight. Still pretty hot. That weld looks kind of good. I went over it with a real quick grind, just knock off the little spatters because once I put the other piece on, it's hard to get um, the grinding wheel where it needs to go. So let's put that on now. Okay, so we got the mounting plate set in place with a magnet and I've got a clamp back there kind of holding it level. Uh, we're leveling it with the framing square behind it, so I'll it along here. And measurement from the center here to there is one inch offset, so that's what we want. This is kind of the critical point to keep this one inch outside of the center of this, to the that side. Sorry, my hands in the way. That side. All right, so let's get this thing welded. Okay, so there's spindle number two. That's the back side or the bottom of it. Um, just trying to show you how much weld I put in there. Um, not my best weld ever, but it's not too bad. Um, Really hard to get all that little splatter out of there because that's a corner, so may I just have to live with that. Anyway, uh, next step is to get them on the cart after this king cools off a little bit. Okay, so there you go. That string lays right over the top of that connection point for the tie rod. So, this was a terribly hard project. It takes a little thinking, a little planning, and... Anyway, hopefully this will help you make your own spindles, um, whether you make them with these modifications or just straight up and down. Kind of whatever makes sense for you. I'm um, hoping, hoping you'll want to do it to where you can maximize your handling and improve the performance of these cycle carts. Here's the other one over here. Um, you know, if you want to copy what I'm doing, great. Um, or come up with something even better. If you got better ideas, boy, I'd love to hear about them. I'm always interested in finding out ways to make these things better. So we'll call that the end of this video, uh, building cycle cart spindles. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the videos. We've got some more build videos coming up for the frame. And if you're in the Arizona area, join the Arizona chapter of the Cycle Cart Club. Or join us on Facebook or at cyclecartclub.com. got some stuff going on there. Uh, we've got some races coming up here locally. And then the Titan Grand Prix. If you haven't heard about that, check that out. Titan, T-I-E-T-O-N. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And uh, have a great day.